Recently, my mind has been occupied by visions of colorful coastal towns, with blue cloudless skies, mirror still waters, and the quiet chirping of birds. But it isn't the Amalfi Coast or the islands of the Aegean I see. Instead, I see towns of my own creation spread out over the horizon. I've spent much of my free time over the past few weeks placing each and every building, erecting palazzos, creating castles. A whole town that could take upwards of a century to develop manifests itself within mere hours. I am, of course, talking about Townscaper, an indie gem from Oskar Stolberg. In it, you are presented with an idyllic blue sea and two options, build and destroy. Now, there are plenty of city builders out there. <laughs> One search on Steam's store page will show hundreds of results, many of them focused on in-depth management with dozens of different building types. So why am I so interested in a game with only two controls? What makes Townscaper so intriguing to me is its outward simplicity. All of the minutia of real construction are generated instantaneously by the game's systems. Windows, doors, stairs, roofs, gardens, all designed by the invisible hand of procedural generation. Just from a technical level, it's impressive. Even more so is how it all just works. From the aesthetic of the detailing to the pop of the color palette, even the way the map generates in an imperfect pseudo-grid lends to its unified and instantly charming feel. The other part of the game that I find remarkable is its ability to almost effortlessly create realistic places. And this is due in large part to the expert way that Townscaper sets the rules for how you can create things. There are two rules in the game that matter the most, but to fully appreciate them, we have to look at the development of real towns. There are two main types of cities, the organic and the grid. You could also think of this as the difference between rural and urban. When space is plentiful, buildings are free to be placed wherever the environment best allows. But when space is at a premium, the environment is usually bent to conform with the buildings. Now, these are not mutually exclusive things. The Manhattan grid marches on unimpeded until it isn't. The truth is that these patterns have more to do with a deeper issue in the architecture of space. It's a simple give and take. The most efficient space to occupy is rectilinear, while straight lines rarely occur in nature, so transitioning from the existing to the built becomes difficult. But this is a problem that has existed for as long as cities themselves. Some cultures did their best to ignore the landscape, while others did what they could to accommodate it. And there are plenty of architects who have recognized this conflict, the desire of livable space to maintain its structure versus the tumultuous ebb and flow of nature. Some, like Frank Lloyd Wright, have embraced nature and attempted to integrate it into their designs. Some have tried to avoid the landscape by lifting buildings off the ground using elements such as pilotee. At the other end of the extreme are those that try to completely reject straight lines and standard room shape. The truth is that there is no real answer to how to solve this problem. No matter how you approach the issue, some people will think your lines are too harsh, while others wish it could be more bold. What matters is that the issue is addressed with clear intentionality. So how does Townscaper address it? Well, it keeps the overall system separate and allows the intersections of them to complicate things. In the horizontal plane, the organic reigns supreme. There is a grid, but its lines are defined by gentle curves, meaning that no two adjacent squares are exactly the same size and shape. In the vertical direction, everything is uniform. Walls are treated exactly the same at every elevation. The juxtaposition of the two creates the nostalgic coastal village vibe that the game exudes. But even beyond the two systems, there are interesting interactions. Typically, you think of the landscape as the existing and the buildings as the new, but by virtue of starting out with a completely blank slate, the game subverts this. When building, all tiles begin as cobbled streets, and it's only when a uniform, flat area becomes surrounded by buildings that any natural landscape is created. By creating an archway at either ends of such field, paths begin to develop across them. Place a building near the path, and it adjusts. 
It is all of these little details that makes the game feel alive. Every block you place has an impact on everything around it, and those results can be surprising. I remember my delight when I first stacked a tower of alternating colors to mimic a lighthouse, only to find that the game had such an interaction already programmed in. Looking at Oscar's body of work, it becomes clear that the little details are an important aspect to his design process, and he has managed to package all of it into a game that lets us discover it gradually, all on our own. Most cities have these elements of discovery built in as a result of many hands working bit by bit to develop a whole. The feeling of wandering down a narrow side street only to find a plaza on the other side is delightful, but being able to replicate that for yourself is remarkable. In a time where travel for people is often limited, having access to these experiences at your fingertips is a power unmatched. Perhaps, when we finally do return to new and unknown places, having built the little details for ourselves will make us appreciate the real-world analogies all the more. After all, it's the little details that matter. Thank you for all your support over the past month. I know this was a bit of a short one, but I've got some big projects in the works. I'll see you in the next one.